Hey class, this is Dr. Schumann, and this video is a walkthrough of the process that you need to use, or can use, or can modify for identifying intervals. And specifically, I'm going to explain uh, how and what you need to look out for uh, when you're identifying uh, intervals that are notated in on a staff and also represented on a keyboard on a piano keyboard because you will see both of those questions on upcoming quizzes um, and there's some good things to think about in explaining both um, processes as you can see that there are only two steps but uh, there's a lot built into them and i recommend that you follow this outline uh, as straightforwardly as possible at first, and then eventually this will collapse into one action where you'll be looking or playing an interval and it will all make sense. It will all be, you'll immediately know. But you have to practice step by step. So the first thing that we need is some notated music. Here is, we'll start over here on the left hand side with these two notes, C and E. So the first thing that you need to do is put them into a scale and count the note names. If you have looked at the All About Intervals document, you can see um, that in terms of traditional interval labels, uh, the note name corresponds with the number of that traditional inter interval label. So if we go back to our sheet music, um, I'm going to put this into a scale. So when you do this, what you should do is use the lower note of the interval, regardless of if they're displaced like a melodic interval or you on top of each other, which we call a harmonic interval. You want to use the lower note as your starting point for the scale. So if it makes sense, uh, which this in this case it does, you can have this be a C scale. So we would do C major because that's what we need to have C and E natural. Okay. So if we're going to count note names, then we would go C, D, E. That's three. So we know it's some kind of third because of three. Now, you may already know from previous videos and discussions in the class that in a major scale, the interval between the tonic note, the first note, and what is called the mediant or the third note is a major third because in scales, the interval between the first and third note and major and minor scales, that tells us if it's major or minor. So because we were able to fit these into a C major scale, that kind of gives it away that it's a major third. But let's just say you don't know that and it's totally fine to, to draw from other th things like that, but I wanna painstakingly outline what you need to do. So let's say you don't know that. So you counted the note names and you know that this is some kind of third, but you need to make sure that you're aware which third it is. So if you remember with the, there are different um, sort of overall types of intervals in the traditional interval labels. So we have perfect intervals, perfect fourths, perfect fifths, octaves, where there's only one interval name for that category of intervals. But the rest of them, like a tritone, which is diminished or augmented, or a major or minor sixth, have these distinctions. And remember, major is the larger one, and minor is the smaller one. And so thirds can either be major or minor. And so what we have to do is figure out is this a major third or a minor third? Now, of course, you could refer to the quality of the scale, <clears throat> or you can count half steps. So in the document that I shared, uh, 
in the document I shared, we have this interval class circle. So interval class, as I explain, is a way of describing intervals just by counting the half steps. Um, it's usually used, it was derived um, because for atonal analysis, um, and it can be helpful figuring out what um, the, in, in identifying intervals, even in a traditional context, it can be helpful um, figuring that out. So please refer to this document if you would like. So um, if we start at zero, we have one, two, three, four. Four half steps going up. Four half steps is a major third. So that's like one way to think about it. Um, and how you can use this interval class circle to help you identify in combination with this table, which was also on the, the All About Intervals document. Um, so we know that this is a major third. Um, another thing that you could do, uh, so four half steps is equivalent to two whole steps. So C to D is a whole step and then D to E is a whole step. Or you could think about how far away is E from the next note um, down in the scale? So we know it's a whole step. Um, so it, you can sort of think of it like levels that we go, when we go from C to D, that's a major second. And when we go from D to E, we're going into the next category because major second is the largest of the seconds. Um, and so we're going into thirds. So depending on how far away from D we go, either a half step or a whole step, that will tell us if it's a minor third, the smaller of the thirds or a major third. Because we go a whole step, D to E, then we know it's a major third. Okay. So we put it into a scale um, and then we used interval class and some other things to figure out which one it is. Let's look at a keyboard. So in, on some of the quizzes coming up, you will see questions where you have to identify the notes and um, on a keyboard and then figure out what they are. So the first, and they'll be marked, not exactly like this. So the first thing that you need to do is name the notes. Um, th probably the biggest mistake that you'll make at this point is naming the notes in a way where they don't fit into a scale. And with traditional interval labels, that's going to change what the interval is because of a principle called enharmonic equivalence, so, which I will explain in a moment. So this we'll call F. But this next one, it's really important to think about, OK, because we have two options. Um, this could be A sharp, or it could be B flat. Those are the those those are both notes that we would associate with this key on a piano. But which of these is in a scale with F major? B flat. B flat is scale degree four of the F major scale. Knowing your scales, as you can tell, is really helpful with identifying intervals. And why does this matter in terms of traditional interval labels? So I mentioned enharmonic equivalence. Enharmonic equivalence uh, is the idea that we have notes that have the same pitch but different note names. So if we were going to represent 
F and E sharp and absolute frequency, they would be the same because of the temperament that we use on pianos. Um, and that's all I'll say about that. But they have different note names and that changes in terms of traditional interval labels, what we call um, what we call them. So for example, an interval going from G to F natural going up from G to F natural, we will call this a minor seventh. Uh, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, that's seven note names, and it's the smaller of the, se of the, the sevenths in reference to G, so it is a minor seventh. Interval class 10. Well, if it's E sharp, it's actually a sixth. G, A, B, C, D, E. Six note names. And it's an augmented sixth because E sharp is a half step larger than E natural. E natural is a major sixth above G. So we've expanded beyond major. And when we do that um, and maintain six note names, uh, then it becomes augmented. Note that the interval class is the same, interval class 10. In analysis that uses interval class, it doesn't matter what the notes are called. Wouldn't that be nice for all of you? But unfortunately, uh, it does matter. And you can see that it's not the same interval in a traditional sense, even though enharmonically the F and the E sharp are the same. So this is why it's really important that when you have a keyboard question that you label the notes correctly. And so what you want to do is make sure that they're notes that appear in the same scale. Just like with a written example, a notated example, have make the bottom note the tonic and then make the upper note something that fits into the scale that it's the tonic of. That'll work 99% of the time. So we're going to go with F and B flat. So we've named our notes. Now we're going to count note, note names. Okay. One, two, three, four. So this is some kind of fourth. Now, if you look at the All About Intervals document, you would know that sometimes tritones are described as a fourth. But here's something to remember about the correlation between intervals and notes in a scale. In a major or minor scale, the interval between the tonic and the fourth note will always be a perfect fourth. The interval between the tonic and the fifth note will always be a perfect fifth. And so if you put it into a scale and you've started with the lower interval note in the interval is the tonic, and if the upper one is four note names away, it's going to be a perfect fourth. If, if this were a C, if the, if the upper note were a C, we would know it's a perfect fifth. And so that, those are some rules about major or minor scales that can be helpful, again, with identifying intervals. Okay, our last example is going to get us to talk about inversion um, and how we can use that. So this is a larger interval. Usually when I am uh, thinking about intervals, I like to divide the scale into everything that is a perfect fifth or smaller and everything that is a perfect fifth or larger. It's kind of an, it, it kind of simplifies um, what I have to do, and I can even use that perfect fifth as a reference point, as I'll show you. Um, so we have, we're going to put these in a scale. So um, we can make D the tonic. In order to have B natural, we need it to be a D major scale. If it is a D minor scale, we would not have B natural, unless we were doing like the melodic minor scale. But I would stick to, um, 
major and natural minor for this kind of exercise. Okay, so we have we have our scale that has our two notes, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's some kind of sixth. Um, sixths, like thirds, have a major and minor. So we have to figure out how to, um, which, which it is. And there are a couple different ways. I mention on this sheet, this document, that you can use interval class, which is what we did when we had the major third, or inversion to check large or imperfect intervals. So let's talk about inversion. Inversion is the idea, um, is what we do when we flip. So we had D going up to B. So what if we have B going up to D? When we flip the arrangement of the interval. And this can be helpful if identifying large intervals is particularly difficult, intervals larger than a perfect fifth. Um, this can be really helpful um, because sometimes just that physical space on a notated staff can throw you off. But if you flip them, the no notes become closer together um, because of sort of the formula of how we flip things. So inversion, like I said, is flipping the arrangement of the interval. So you take the top note and you put it on the bottom. The bottom note goes on the top. And in terms of traditional interval labels, there is a formula for it. So you, we, we use Arabic numerals to represent the interval category from two for seconds to eight for octaves. Um, so what you do is you subtract that number from nine. The difference is the interval category for the next, for the inverted um, interval. And then you, unless it's a perfect interval, you have to change the label to whatever the other qualifier is. So major becomes minor diminished becomes augmented, and vice versa. So if you look here, we have a perfect fifth. We subtract the five from nine, we get four. Perfect stays the same. So perfect fifths become perfect fourths, and vice versa. Major sixth. We have uh, six. My, uh, nine minus six is three. Major becomes minor. And then these are two tritones. Um, here it's an augmented fourth, uh, F, G, A, B natural, that's four note names, and that becomes a diminished fifth. B, no, oh, I wrote that wrong. B, C, D, E, F is five note names, diminished fifth. Um, so that's inversion. So we... This, this is specifically helpful with intervals larger than a perfect fifth. So if we come here, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's larger than a perfect fifth. This inverts um, B, C, D is three. And if you think about is that two, two whole steps would be a major third. So it's some kind of third, it inverts to some kind of third. Well, B to C, B, C, D. B to C is a half step. So it's a half step and a major third, in a major second, half step and a whole step, three half steps. This is a minor third. And so if this interval inverts to a minor third, then it has to be some kind of sixth because nine minus six, nine minus three is six, and it has to be major because minor becomes major. So that's how you can use inversion to figure out a large interval. So please uh, be in touch if you have um, questions or, or concerns or trouble with this. Um, it is challenging to absorb all of this in so little time, um, but with practice, it becomes really, really easy. So, okay, great. I hope you all have a great week.